were given the materials used to construct an electrochemical cell and were asked various questions about it, including the initial cell voltage. Here we'll work through this and answer all the questions. An electrochemical cell is constructed using a silver electrode in one molar silver nitrate and a nickel electrode in one molar nickel 2 nitrate. A salt bridge with one molar KNO3 is placed between the beakers. We'll add a diagram to represent the cell. We're asked which electrode is the cathode and told to write its half reaction. We're also asked to identify the anode and write its half reaction. Next, we're asked to write the overall redox equation and find the initial voltage of this cell. Unless otherwise stated, we always assume we are at standard conditions. We are asked which electrode electrons are flowing toward while this cell is operating. And finally, we are asked which way potassium cations are moving in the salt bridge. We'll answer these questions one at a time. In part A, we are asked to identify the cathode and write its half reaction. We'll look at the reduction table in the data booklet and locate the half reactions for silver and nickel. The rule is the higher half reaction on this table is the cathode, and the lower half reaction on the table is the anode. So we know that the cathode is the silver electrode, and we're asked to write the half reaction at the cathode. Remember that reduction occurs at the cathode. The reduction half reaction for Ag can be copied directly from the table. The half reactions on this table are all written as reductions, so the half reaction is Ag plus plus one electron gives Ag solid. Because this half reaction is not reversed, we know that its standard reduction potential, E0, is positive 0 0.80 volts. The B part of this question asks us for the anode and its half reaction. The anode is the lower of the two metals on the table, so it is nickel in this case. So we'll mark nickel as the anode. We're asked to write the half reaction occurring at the anode. We know that at the anode, oxidation occurs. The half reactions on the table are all written as reductions, so for oxidation, the half reaction on the table must be reversed. So reversing this half reaction, we get Ni solid gives Ni2 plus, plus two electrons. Now, when a half reaction is reversed, the sign on E0 is switched. On the table, it is negative 0.26 volts. So the E0 value for this half reaction, written as an oxidation, is positive 0.26 volts. Because the half reaction at the anode is oxidation, positive 0.26 volts is called the oxidation potential of nickel metal whereas the negative 0.26 volts on the table is called the reduction potential of Ni2+. So now we have the half reaction at the anode along with its E0 value, 0.26 volts. The C part of this question asks us to write the overall redox equation and find the initial voltage of the cell. First, we write the equation for the overall redox reaction. We get this by adding up half reactions at the cathode and the anode. Notice Ag plus gains one electron, while nickel loses two electrons. Electrons need to be balanced so that the number lost is equal to the number gained. So we multiply the silver half reaction by two. So now we have two electrons gained by the Ag plus ions and two electrons lost by the nickel atoms, so electrons are now balanced. 
It is very important to know that when we multiply a half reaction by a factor like 2, that we do not multiply the E0 value by anything. It stays the same. Voltage is the energy per electron. Doubling the number of electrons does not change the energy possessed by each electron, so the voltage remains the same. Remember the only way we alter an E0 value is we switch its sign when the half reaction is reversed. So now we can add these two half reactions to obtain the equation for the overall redox reaction. Starting out on the left side, we have two Ag plus ions on the top left, and one nickel atom from the bottom left. And on the right side, we have two silver atoms from the top right, and one nickel 2 plus ion from the bottom right. Remember the number of electrons gained is equal to the number lost. So we just cancelled out electrons. So this is the balanced equation for the overall redox reaction. If you check, you'll see that atoms and charges are balanced. Now we can calculate the E0 value for the overall redox reaction. We calculate this by adding up the E0 values for the half reactions as written here. 0 0.80 plus 0 0.26 adds up to 1.06 volts. This is called the standard cell potential for this electrochemical cell. It is also the initial voltage this cell would have if it was set up at standard conditions, which are 25 degrees Celsius, 1 molar solutions, and when gases are involved, 1 atmosphere pressure. So we found the initial voltage of this cell at standard conditions, and it's 1.06 volts, just a little over 1 volt. The D part of this question asks toward which electrode electrons are flowing as the cell operates. We learned in the previous video that electrons always flow from the anode toward the cathode in the wires. So if we replace the voltmeter with a light bulb so that current can pass through, we see that electrons move from the nickel anode toward the silver cathode in this cell. So we can say that electrons are flowing toward the silver electrode as this cell operates. This makes sense when you look at the half reactions. The half reaction for the nickel electrode tells us that electrons are lost from the nickel electrode. And the half reaction for silver tells us that electrons are gained at the silver electrode. Therefore, electrons must be flowing from the nickel electrode where they're lost to the silver electrode where they're gained. The E part of this question asks us which way K plus ions are moving as the cell operates. K plus ions are cations because they're positive. And from the previous video, we learned that cations in the salt bridge always move toward the solution surrounding the cathode. So potassium ions are moving toward the silver nitrate solution as the cell operates. So we can see that given the materials an electrochemical cell is constructed from, and the standard reduction table, we were able to answer many questions about the cell.